Before we get started, don't forget to hit that like button, that bell icon button, and that share button. Thank you. This rapper had a genius marketing plan, and who could possibly forget his name? Hello everyone, I'm Von the Stampede, and today we are taking a look at the life and the career of Mike Jones. Who in the hell are you? Mike Jones. Who? Mike, Mike Jones. Jones! Who? Mike, Mike Jones! Jones. <laughs> Go home! <laughs> Born as Michael Allen Jones on November 18, 1981 in Houston, Texas, Michael wanted to be a professional NBA player when he was attending school but soon had to drop out in the ninth grade. He would later get a job in fast food restaurants and had another job at Compact Plant which he was selling cell phones. Jones had a passion for music and was inspired by DJ Screw, Scarface, basically any rapper in the Houston area. Jones would soon team up with a rap group called Soul Funk. They released the album called Thuggin. Jones would soon leave the group a year later and in 2004, Jones delivered his first major single, Steel Tipping. Originally, Tippin was supposed to have Chameleon there on the verse, but was replaced by Paul Wall. And the reason why Chameleon there was replaced was because he said something about Houston rappers have bad lyrical skills, aka y'all trash. And rappers in that area took offense to that, especially those who were signed to Swish House. See that, I can't tell you, cause see, I ain't the one who woke up with it. I can't tell you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, it's like saying, I man, what made that person hit you? You gotta ask him. Like, I don't know, like, I just be ready for what, what happened, how it happened. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't come out with it. He came out with it. I was, oh, okay, wow, you know what I'm saying? I responded, we, whatever, and that's what it was. I yeah. went on to sell three million records. He went on to sell a million records, got a Grammy. Mm -hmm. Salute to him. Yeah. We both still. Ego on the radio. Yeah, man, I'm challenging all these boys, man, to be lyrical, man. These dudes ain't lyrical, and they need to step their lyrical game up. And, you know, they ain't repping Houston the way they need to be repping Houston. So, of course, Swisher House, one of the major labels over there in uh, Houston, they artists took offense. And, you know, Mike, you know, uh, what's his name, uh, Mike Jones and all the rest of them, you know, was basically like this dude's a clown. In 2005, Mike Jones turned out his debut album, who is Mike Jones, which reached double platinum and is Jones' best selling album. My favorite songs from this album is Back Then, Still Tipping, Scandalous Hoes, and Screw That. With the success of his debut album hitting number three in the Billboard Top 100, Mike Jones' songs got its sued up remix and back then was featured on Def Jam Icon and was a playable character. The game is horrible, but we are moving on. During 2005, Jones was featured in a track with the Ying Yang twins, Bad, Bow Wow, Fresh As I Is, and T-Pain, I'm In Love With The Stripper. T-Pain's I'm In Love With A Stripper was Mike Jones' highest single charted to date. Mike Jones was planning to release his second album, The American Dream, in 2007, but the label did not like Mike Jones' vision. So instead of an album release, he released American Dream as an EP instead of an album. The track, My 6-4, featuring Bum B and Snoop Dogg. When Tro, Tro, the girl showed me love when they 
Benz hit the floor. I said I'm leaning on the curb, sipping syrup, blowing drunk. I Unfortunately, didn't make it to the Billboard Top 100, but it did reach number 22 on the U.S. rap charts. Mr. Jones is another fan favorite, which debuted at number 92 on the Billboard 100, but quickly fell off the charts. After his EP, Jones would try to rebrand himself as he lost weight and got rid of his grills. When his fans noticed Jones' new look, they believed he was doing drugs. The rumors got so out of hand that Mike Jones had to come out to the public and say he wasn't doing any drugs, just changing his diet and look to promote his next project. I was well, almost 300 pounds, man. I lost almost 100, you know what I'm saying? I'm 190 right now, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, that goes, you know, from eating Subway and running on the treadmill and, you know what I'm saying, watching what I eat and I'm trying to make sure I'm the Urban Jerry right here, man. You know, fitness and, you know, I've been away from the market so long, I just wanted to come back with a new look, you know what I'm saying, a new image and a new sound, you know what I'm saying? Really, the sound been here, but since people say it's new, it's new, you feel me? In May 19, 2008, Mike Jones laid out a single called Cuddle Buddy, featuring Trey Songs, Twister, and Lil Wayne. Mike Jones sprang his next single, Next To You, which did extremely well in the Billboard charts. Jones' second studio album, The Voice, debuted at number 12 on the Billboard charts and sold 25K for the first week. Now, why did his second album make low sales compared to his first album that sold over a million copies? Mike Jones revealed that the singles Cuddle Buddy and Next To You were recorded in 2006, and if the label let Mike Jones release the American Dream as he intended, these singles would have did a lot better. He would come off the buzz from his first album and Cuddle Buddy featured T-Pain, which Mike Jones and T-Pain had a mega hit with I'm in love with the stripper. When you really think about it, Mike Jones didn't release his official second album until four years later, which is a huge gap, and I guess a lot of fans moved on at that point. Well, Platt on the boy, you know? In 2006, you know, I was ready to come out and do it again with the American Dream. I was gonna do the American Dream movie and American Dream album with Cuddy Buddy on that album, with Next to You on that album, and Mr. Jones and all the other songs that y'all done heard. Mr. Jones wasn't supposed to be a single, it was supposed to be a single for the soundtrack, not a single for my solo album. But you know, a lot of people didn't like Cuddy Buddy back then. They didn't like Next To You back then. So when I seen that they didn't have the same vision I had then, and didn't have the same enthused in the music like I did, I held on to my records. And I let them put out the EP in the soundtrack, because I still wanted the fans to still get a visual of how I came to live the American dream. I wasn't able to do the album how I wanted to, but I still wanted to give them a visual. So I held on to these records, and in that time of going through politics with them, I was like, man, you know what, I got time now. You know, I can start working on my health and my image. Oh, I'm finna do it again. But you know, since they ain't like it, you know what I'm like, what? You don't like Cuddy Buddy? You don't like Next To You? I ain't even finna put no album out then. Y'all don't, don't feel it. You know, why am I finna give y'all this album and y'all don't feel it? It ain't gonna get the proper push. And when it come out, they gonna say Mike Jones failed. In 2010, Mike Jones released his third album, but was having trouble with his label when he released the single, So Hot. The label wasn't feeling it, so Mike Jones requested his release. Around 2011, Jones was facing more problems from his former record labels, which was holding money from his first and second album sales. Well, I, I can't say because I know what was held for me from 2012 to 2016, but I can't say that's what they owe me because they still holding money that they saying that I owe from the past. You see what I'm saying? Let's, let, let, right, give, let, okay. me give, let me give you an example. Boom, say cheese. When would you establish? What year? 2011. Okay, 2011. Boom, yes, your blow out you. Say cheese all over the world, 20 million. You know what I'm saying? 20 million. Now, 20 million, tax on 20 million is six. You see what I'm saying? So right. it went to Miss V in care of Sean Cotton. You see what I'm saying? Now she got the bread, but she threw the tax on you. You see what I'm saying? Right. So you living your life trying to really get say cheese off the ground, off the ground, and while you trying to get it off the ground for you even think you can get a loan, they like, hey, sorry, sir, uh, we got a letter saying you owe, you know, six million from the government. 
You made 20 million. 20 million? I didn't do that. V made that. Y'all made that. Well, nah, it was in care of. You see what I'm saying? What? Mm. Do you got this 6 million? If not, we're going to freeze all the assets. We're going to take everything. We're going to hold up everything. We're going to whoop, whoop, whoop. We're going to, oh, no, 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 no. Please, no. Well, what you want to do? What you got? What you look talk to me? You know what I'm saying? What we doing? What we doing? You feel me? Right. If you try to buck the system, okay, buck, and then you're going to be in jail for the invasion. But if you're going to play right and play ball, nigga, IRS probation, my nigga. What you got? You know what I'm saying? We knowing you up, but go ahead and help us clear this issue. And we're going to go ahead and help you clear this issue. And they've been helping. Things wasn't so bad with Mike Jones. He got together with Michael Watts and plans on doing more projects with him together. Personally, me and Watts, we always been A1. And that's why we able to be here now. Because we always personally been cool. I think as we both started blowing up mainstream and commercially, you know what I'm saying, it got real political. You know what I'm saying? Because we got with another corporate person, you know what I'm saying, and we had to weigh that out and get through all that, and now we back to the music and back to what grew us to that point, you know what I'm saying, 10 years ago, 10 years later, you know what I'm saying, and we got Multiplex to show, and why it's on the radio, household name, I'm a household name, and we just bringing it back, you know what I'm saying, bringing it back, you know what I'm saying, showing everybody that we still good, like, you know what I'm saying, regardless of all of the madness, you know what I'm saying, we still good, you know, personally and moving forward on the business you know what i'm saying overall mike jones should have been a bigger artist but his growth was stunted due by studio meddling hell i believe he would have reached legend status like rick ross or jeezy levels but that never happened which is really disappointing because mike jones was climbing up the tops in the southern rap game in the 2000s and in that same decade he kind of fell off jones did his thing in the rap game and we can't deny mike jones Handed out his number was a masterful tactic in hip hop marketing. And that was the end of the video. What is your favorite Mike Jones song? Don't forget to comment, subscribe, hit that bell icon button, even hit that like button. I'm Vaughn the Stampede, and I'll see you guys next time.